people in the family is thinking that she was, you know, kidnapped and then she was sold in, like, the black market. So this is what my questions were about. I was like, okay, well, what's my aunt's name? And the Ouija board spelled out Danilia. Then I said, well, what year was she born? And it said 1964. Then I said, then I asked the Ouija board um, who took her, and it spelled out nuns. And then I said, well, where is she now? And it said New York. And then I said, well, what is her name? And it spelled out Claire. And it was just like a lot of freaky stuff that no one knew, and it really freaked me out, whatever. So I told Bill about it, told Bill all about it, and then that's why I'm here. <laughs> and that's now the second guest we have here is Michael Dreyer, who's a uh, <coughs> hypno uh, depossession therapist. Uh, we think we know no, what a hypnotherapist is. Hypnotherapist what, is a deep, what is a depossession, in, in a depossession therapist? practitioner? Um, depossession practitioner is one who um, cleanses the auric field of somebody by removing attachments. And attachments, by we, we mean um, other entities in spirit form. That, well, spirits are real. And um, I read an interesting <laughs> book once by. Uh, Wilson Van Dusen on the presence of spirits and his experiences in a mental hospital showed that many people we think are actually mentally ill or suffer from some degree of uh, spirit possession actually. Now my the guest of the show who's going to lead the seance is Jory Ann, the coffee psychic. Uh, everybody's really going to ask why they call you coffee psychic and then give us some of your mm -hmm. background. Okay. Uh, the reason everyone calls me coffee psychic is when I first started doing my psychic work, I started using a cup of coffee as though it's a crystal ball. By pouring cream into it, I'm able to access a lot of information. Uh, I can see letters, numbers, body parts, just everything comes up. Body parts? Everything. <laughs> everything. And uh, when I was working with that as much as I was, all of my other abilities started opening up, uh, even my uh, clear audience where I could hear the spirits. And that was actually one of the things that led me into channeling, the channeling work and the doing the seances and things like that. Thank you, Jerry Ann, and thank you for coming from Indiana to be on the show. You're welcome. And you brought Ellen Topel. Yes. I got that right? You did. Ellen, yeah. um, could you give us some, uh, some of your background? Um, who are you while you're here? Uh, Ellen, uh, Jerry Ann dragged you down here? She didn't drag me. I wanted to be here to assist her and to experience what, what kind of work she does and, and to help her in any way I can. And also I've asked if I can talk to my father who died approximately 28 years ago and uh, if she would channel mm -hmm. some kind of communication for me. Okay. Well, uh, this is a live show. Our phone number is uh, area code 312-738-1845. During the seance, we will be taking calls from the audience, but um, Jerry Ann, will you kick it off? Um, yes, we can. And the one thing that I want to mention to people is yes. that um, when we are taking calls from the audience is that they need to be a little bit more deeper questions rather than just, where did I lose my keys? Because that's something yes, that you would call uh, up for a psychic or something like that. Such as, what is my purpose in life? But is my purpose in life to do access cable? And, uh, yes, you know, yes. It scares me. Or why did I marry so-and-so? Things like that. <laughs> yes, yes, why did you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is the meaning of this relationship? You know, questions like that. There's some really bad judgment really calls. Okay. There you go. Where is the perfect man? What are things? Yes, yes. <laughs> what is there his you name? Go. Okay. I don't okay. know. Okay. All right, so if we're all ready, we we'll hold hands as much as we can. All right. And then uh, what we should do is we should say uh, three our fathers, and then uh, the Hail Mary, and the 23rd Psalm. Okay? Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that it will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He hath walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil. With me. Thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. Thou preparest the table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely mercy and goodness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Okay, next now what we should be doing is we should be doing, we should om, and that would be three times. We can do the oming three times here, okay? Does everyone know how to om? Yeah? Okay, so you just you just take a breath and then you om as long as you can and do it three times. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put myself into uh, the state that I put myself into where the spirits can speak through me. And then when they are ready, then they will tell you that they are ready. Good day. We are now uh, ready to assist you in uh, whatever way we may. Susan? Okay. 
can you ask any questions? Susan should ask. Um, to please say that whoever would ask must identify themselves first by name, please. Susan? John Baptiste? Greetings. Um, what's my aunt's daughter what that died? What was her name? The name is not fully clear. Do you, is she still, is she still alive or did, did she really die in 66? <clears throat> this one died in 67. So she did die? She did make a transition, yes. And do you know how she died? Illness. Disease of the physical body. And do you know how old she was at the time she died? Seems to be the three or four year mark. And do you know who took her away from my aunt? <coughs> was to say it was first women, but then uh, a man somehow was involved. And there was some ill will meant, but the child was not able to, per se, uh, recuperate to be of use to these people. Do you understand this? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. The soul of this being has uh, thus already reincarnated, though, so is not to worry of this one. Okay. And is a female. Okay. <coughs> I have a question. My name is William Fred Gadomsky, and Part of our crew is Carol Boltonell, and she's ill today. Yes. Can you give us any words for her? She may be watching at this time on TV. God's blessings be with her. She has three healing spirits surrounding her. She is uh, aware of this as she can feel them with her. Also, her uh, grandmother stands beside her and is a guarding. We have a caller. Uh, is that Gary? Mary, I'm sorry, Mary's on the line. Mary, you have a question for the spirits? Mary? Hello, Mary? My brother died in 91. Like Good morning. Could you turn your TV set off, please? Turn your TV set off. Okay. Turn your TV set off. Okay. Yes, yeah. it's off. Yeah. Uh, we're having problems with the audio today for some reason, phones. I would like to uh, ask her about my brother that died. If we can, we'll come back to Mary later when the system is, when the problem is solved. Anybody else have a question for the spirits? I have a question. My name is Ellen Joy Feinberg Phillips Topel. I would like to speak with my father. Is he present? To call his name, please. Richard Feinberg Phillips. This one is here. What a nice smile. 
this one had. Yes? Yes. Nice dark hair, yes? Yes. What would you like to know of this one? He says he is sorry that he had to leave so quickly by you. What is he doing? He has been furthering his spiritual path, but he is also able to come around and glimpse in to watch, to check in on the family all. How can he do that? How does he, how can he show himself so I know? What signs would you look for? Is that the question? That is the question. You feel him, do you not, around you? Sometimes. This is when he is by you. When you have a sense of him, sometimes you feel his presence. There have been times where you have felt touched. Do you understand? Not really. If there is a light touch upon the skin or a warm feeling, this has been your father coming by you. If ever you see something out of the corner of your eye, you go to look and you see nothing. Trust what you first experienced, and that was that you did see someone. Do you understand? Yes. Also, there is a special fragrance of your father that you may note on occasion. And then in the dream state as well, for he does come by you. And he has been saddened by your grief that you have carried for ever so long. Do you understand? Yes. Does he have any suggestions? Can he help? He says, you should play chess. It's <laughs> a good idea. <laughs> this would help it. you not be so serious, he says. <laughs> Where you have been so serious as you were younger. We played chess a lot when, we were, when I was younger. Would this not make you feel better? Yes. Then you may imagine as he would be sitting across from you, he says. And there he is, your father. Uh, we have Mary on the line again. Perhaps the phone system is working a little better t at this point. And he kisses you. Sorry. Hello. Thank you. Can you Understand. hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yes, I would like for you to get in touch with my brother. Okay. okay. Mary, you're on the line again. You have a uh, question. Yes. And try and be, you know, something like, what's my meaning in life and all that. No, I want Which is to a good question sometimes. Hello? I want to get in touch with my brother. Mary? Yes. Uh, we're trying to bring Mary over now. Um, electronically, we bring her over. Um, no, we haven't brought her over yet. And they oh. also say, do not lose your keys from your father, Miss Ellen. M Mary? Yes. On the line, uh, I just heard was trying to uh, get in contact with her brother, who died. Please just say the name. Mary, last name? The last name? Yes. Last name, please. Hello? Yes, last name? Last name? Last name? Bankrum. Who? Bankrum. Natrum? Natrum. Mangrum. Ma Mang? Mangrum. Mangrum. Mangrum, sorry. Mangrum. May we to please have the first name as well? Daniel. First name, please? Daniel. Darnell. <sighs> This one seemed to have some things going on in uh, this life that were not congruent with keeping 
um, healthy, so to speak. Would this make sense for Mary? Our phone connection is not working. So yeah. Yes, he said yes. Yes. This one has learned great lessons in the dying process, Mary. And these were many of the experiences. This one came to the earth plane to learn. Okay. Know this, that this one has kept you very, very close to his heart. Yes. And you were a major uh, player in his life. Do you understand this? Yes, I do. His love goes out to you. You also helped him in his healing process. Do you understand this? Yes. And there seems to be uh, many flowers that he gives to you as a gift in saying thank you. Okay. You were also a teacher for him. Do you understand? Yes. And all is uh, greatly appreciated. Do you understand that his work has been completed on the earth plane at this time now because of all that he had to go through? No. He had a very rough time, but he completed his hardest tasks and does not have to return. This is truly a blessing. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, because he took his life. He took his life. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Uh, Richard, do you have a question for Jorianne or Spirits? My fiance left uh, uh, town about two weeks ago, and I just wanted to find out if she's going to be okay. She will be well, my dear. You need to allow her her space. Do you understand? Yes, I do. You, you hold on too tight. And you also think that you can change black into white when you cannot, and your journey is to accept what is. Do you understand this? Well, um, yes, I do, when you're perfectly online. Um, but is she going to be okay? She will be well, sir. Will we ever get married? This is not a question to be asked at this time. Will you be able to learn acceptance? Very good. Thank many, you. Many good wishes to you. Thank you very much. You're you're terrific. Uh, we have Lori on the line. Lori. Hi. Good day, Lori. Uh, I have a question for the psychic. I was interested in uh, my past life, and I'm wondering if she can tell me anything about that. And I'm also curious about guardian angels, spirits, that type of thing that I have around me. The question needs to be directed to the spirits. Is this understood? Okay. So am I to ask the spirits the question? Um, I would like to know from the spirits, uh, who is my protection? The Archangel Michael seems to be one of your guides. Do you communicate with him yet? No, I do not. This would be advised. Okay. There also seems to be an angel of the seventh level around you that works with you at the night time. I can believe that. And what does that mean? That means someone who is helping your spiritual growth to evolve. Okay. Are you able to tell me something about my past life? Seems to be many lifetimes have been coming in alignment with each other to find the soul's purpose of why you have been placed on the earth. 
Would that make sense to you at this time? It's not clear. I mean, can you tell me a little bit more about direction? That is the question. That is what you are seeking, is the soul's purpose. Do you understand that? I understand that, but... This will be found, my dear, in the working with your spirits through meditation. Okay. And this should be something that should not be taken lightly. This should be something that should be done on a weekly basis. Okay. And if you are able to do this for the self, within a three-month period, you will be experiencing a shift. And you will know this. Okay. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have one more caller on the line, but I have a question for the spirits. Uh, a general question about our society as a whole. Are people too dependent or too interested in past lives and not enough in their current life that they're now living? The past lives have been here as markers for people to look back and say, this is what I've experienced thus far and this is where I am going. So they are fine to look back and to experience in that sense. But what is and what always will be is the present. And to be totally conscious in the present. And that is what much of people are not. The problem of being totally conscious of being in the present, how can we achieve that? Which is a big question. To say one should be totally aware of who they are, of what is their purpose, of what they are doing with each other and where they are headed for within themselves and within society and how that affects the world is of utmost importance. And to be fully responsible for each and every choice that they make. And we are responsible for our choices. All of them. Greg, we have Greg on the line. Greg, do you have a question or comment? I do. Yes, Greg? Uh, my great friend and partner, Kevin, died last October after a long and painful and difficult Death. many years, and I just wondered if he's okay. I just miss him so much. We will say this, this one is not available to acknowledge at this point, but this will be said for you. There is much healing and transition that is coming around you yourself. Do you understand this? I'm trying to. There are many changes that will be coming into your life. And we will say that trust is something that should be worked on at this time. Trust? Yes. Thank you. I have one more question uh, for the spirits. Do you have any message for any of our crew members who come out and crewed on the show as volunteers, such as Jose Salazar or Audrey Lindsay or Tyrone Ivory or Afro? Let us say one at a time, please. I'm sorry, sorry. Jose Salazar. <coughs> Do please watch his driving. Okay. And uh, to keep his ideals in the forefront of his mind. Right. Audrey Lindsay. What a wonderful spirit this one is. How giving and loving and working on centering. Is this understood? Yes. Uh, Afro. Like this ex excitable, beautiful energy. And uh, this one also needs to give more. And this one should be looking at ex expressing more in the written form. Good point. Uh, and Mr. Renault Renault Tatum. 
much seems to have been achieved here, but much more to be achieved. Does this make sense to you at this time? I think it makes sense to Renault. Thank you uh, for our queries about a crew. Uh, do we have any more? I don't believe we have any more callers at this time. It might be appropriate to leave and make engage in a discussion on the nature of channeling. Though, in the spirit realm, do you have any comment on the nature of channeling? Channeling as we would have it considered has been going on since time has begun. The communication of the higher forces to thus in the material world to help those accelerate their awareness to grow beyond their limits and bounds into who they truly are supposed to be to then thus be able to reunite with uh, the God Force. So this is nothing new. I think we can leave now and come back to a general discussion of channeling, if you feel up to it, the spirit. Uh, oh, do you have a spirit name before you leave? Raha. Pardon? Ra, thank you. Thank you, Ra. Yes, Raha. Raha, thank you. Yes, blessings be to all those. Okay, I, uh, I shift in energy where um, I was seeing all gray because I'm, I'm, uh, when I'm in a channeled state, I'm totally embraced in white light. And um, it's like I'm over to the side and then it's just a matter of me uh, coming back and then uh, reorienting my entire uh, spiritual body back into my physical body and just coming back all the way up. Jorianne, um We can't cover the whole subject of channeling. You know, we have about uh, 25 minutes left. Yeah. But can you recommend any books people might go to the library to um, go to the library and research on the subject of channeling? Yes. Um, earlier on, uh, before the show started, we had been talking, and the one book on channeling by uh, John Klimo. It's a very good book. Uh, I believe that's the one with the introduction by Charles Tart, as I recall. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I, I knew about the book, but I wanted you to mention it. Yes, yes. I got it only for five bucks. It was a bargain. Great. <laughs> yes. I can't help but pass up bargain books. Susan, do you have any comments or questions on what we just experienced? Um, well, I, I was just shocked to find out that, you know, that you said that she actually did die, because everyone in the family thought that she was actually kidnapped, and she's still living, especially after the experience I had with the Ouija board, that yeah. Technically, it was like, uh, it, since it was midnight on Halloween, it was most likely it was what, All Saints Day or All Souls Day, because it was yeah. November 1st. So everyone thought it's like, you know, that she was definitely living, so that was like, that shocked me. <laughs> well, the, the problem with that, though, too, with the Ouija board, and this is what uh, many of us in the spiritual field know, is that it can, it can be a tool for accessing information psychically, but it's also considered in most of the industry as a very dangerous tool mm. for the people that don't know how to do protection you know, guide themselves. They don't know how to make contact with the higher spirits, but rather you're, ta you're actually opening a door to anybody mm -hmm. in the lower astral planes mm. that could sit there and give you just kind of any information. You're just opening a door saying, come on in, any, any Whoever whatever's out there. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. not every and they could mislead you. And there's such thing as really low-level spirits. Mm -hmm. They're really scuzzy. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. Uh, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't do that on, on the earth plane in your life now, and you know it'd be dangerous to do it in the spirit world. Right. I mean, right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. people don't think of it that same way. You don't open yeah. your door and just let anyone walk in. Right. Okay. So you actually have to um, uh, invoke. You really have to call the higher spirits. You mm -hmm. know, Jesus Christ, you know, Mother right. Mary and the higher uh, spirit guides and stuff to help mm -hmm. you in that information. And one of the ways you can do that, because everybody has spirit guides, you can call on one of the spirit guides to be your gatekeeper. He, and he is, or she, is given charge of lo allowing no spirit in that is not of, uh, of a similar vibration to you or higher. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had been doing a uh, channeling last week, just a couple of days ago. And I had all sorts of spirits coming up to me, okay? And then suddenly, from the right side, this one woman was coming up to me. <coughs> uh, she was black. She had short, curly red hair. She was carrying a bag. And the spirit on the side of me went like this. Totally stopped her. Then she disappeared. Mm. So your spirit guides are in charge to help you. Okay. Okay? So you really want to work, work with that. And then if you're going to go back and do the Ouija board again... I doubt it. Do all, do all <laughs> Some people actually have spirits coming into their home after they do the Ouija board. Mm -hmm. They have uh, interruptions uh, with their TV set. Things are moved in the house. They have nightmares. All sorts of terrible things happen. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then people get, um, gosh, they can get depressed, everything. Mm -hmm. So that's when, you know, Michael and I, many times we do the uh, deposition work to come in and clear a house or to clear people from attachments mm -hmm. and stuff. I, I take an excellent book, I don't know if any of you have read it, called the, by Wilson Van Dusen, The Presence of Spirits. I haven't seen it. It was his experiences in a state psychiatric hospital mm -hmm. and his in-depth interviews with the patients and he took their ravings quite seriously and listened to them very carefully and he found out that they had access to information that, that their background could not explain at all. Mm -hmm. And his, his conclusion because he started off very conventional psychi psychiatrist, conventional education, was the actual presence of spirits. And that was the conclusion from the book. Uh, Wilson, Wilson Van Dusen, excellent work, Presence of Spirits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but you might, I would recommend you look in the local library and you'll probably find it there, or, or a large major regional library, you'll find it there. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you feel about this, Ellen, this whole show, what we experienced today? I, I'm just starting to open up to the idea of, of spirituality and learning the communication. And it's very exciting to have that opportunity. Um, I wish I had more time. <laughs> I'd love to hear more. <laughs> but it's interesting what came up uh, about the, the chess because uh, I, I haven't played in years and it was something I enjoyed when I was younger. That's, that was very interesting. Well, I, I find that the present spirits are quite real, but mm -hmm. we don't realize it until we actually get a physical manifestation. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. Now, even animal spirits are quite real yes, because they are. Um, one night that my cat died, my <laughs> Maggie had had her for years, and about three in the morning, I felt a cat on my head, like somebody mm -hmm. jumped on my head, but there was no cat there, and I found her dead the next morning. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, but. Uh, you know, as soon as I felt it in my head, I felt it was the cat. It was, it was my cat, Maggie, but it wasn't there. Or else you experience your um, parents, say, in a half-sleep state. Mm -hmm. What do they call it? Hypogogic state? Uh, hypnagogic. Hypnagogic, yeah. sorry. Hypnagogic state. <coughs> uh, and I think that hypnagogic state, is that a kind of an avenue to contact with spirits? This, this state between sleep and wakefulness? Perhaps you could talk about that, Michael? It's kind of a, uh, it just as you're slipping in, you go into that, and it's kind of an alpha state before you get into deep sleep. And if you can catch it right at that moment and hold it, um, that's a good, yeah, it'd be in that state that you can make contact and be open to channeling. Uh, I believe uh, Manuel Swedenborg, famous um, 18th century European mystic, would spend hours and hours in hypnogogic state and generated scores of books on the subject of the spirit world and heaven and hell and all that. Yeah, and that's actually what you do. When you go into channeling, you go into an altered state. You, you change your state, and you actually have to raise your vibrations to the higher level so the mm. spirits can come in and meet you at that level. Yeah. I would also recommend to anybody watching that they uh, look for material literature by Emanuel Swedenborg. Uh, he 
went through this. He, he brought up this material, I guess, from a Christian background. Uh, if you're a Muslim, you'd pick it up from a Muslim background. If you were a Buddhist, you'd pick it up from a Buddhist background. But the works of Emanuel Swedenborg, I would definitely recommend, especially his classic work, Heaven and Hell. Uh, also, Kalimo's work on channeling with Charles Tart's introduction. And I would also recommend uh, Wilson Van Dusen's work, uh, The Presence of Spirits. Anybody else would recommend any materials or books people should read? Because, you know, if you're really going to be serious about it, you just don't watch a TV show. Yes, I do. Totally. I totally recommend the book, uh, Dion Fortune's book, Psychic Self-Defense. Psych good. I like the title. Psychic Self-Defense. Because you just don't go, you know, if you normally live in Hawaii, you don't suddenly run over to uh, Alaska. You know, you have to know what the environment is. You have to know what to wear as, you know, as far as protection goes. So you have to know protection when you're changing states, things like that. Psychics, mm -hmm. what did you cover? I mean, we can't cover the whole book, but you give us some Covered high points. everything. Hauntings, um, you know, uh, God, astral projection. I mean, just anything and everything that you could possibly imagine in the psychic field is covered in there. And I think a lot of people in our culture, Michael, you might experience this, are going a bit overboard in this area of... Uh, you know, psychic contact, spirit contact, uh, recklessly going into it without any thought or study? Um, or if it's insufficient thought, insufficient study. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what's your question again? I, I mean, people are entering into this world of, of spirit uh, contact kind of carelessly or recklessly. I, yeah. I, think, it's, I think sometimes it's almost <laughs> epidemic, you know. Yeah, I'm. I'm still not understanding what the. I mean, what is. basically reckless entering into spirit contact? You might be experiencing some of this with your clients. Um. Yeah. Um. Not a lot, really. We we get into other kinds of things. Um. Really, the the kind of contacts that that they've made, um, they don't know they've made it. They've simply opened themselves to certain kinds of influences uh, in life that are really not appropriate for them and, and once they kind of open up a certain area of their psychic aura or their, their field then um, this allows other entities outside to attach and, and then pretty soon they're more susceptible to certain kind of influences. Well we have some callers and we have about 15 minutes left. Sandra, you have a question or comment for uh, Jorianne or Michael? Uh, I would like for her to do a reading on me. Well, we don't do readings oh. here, Mom. Sorry. Oh. But do you have any what? comments on, on the nature of channeling and, re and re spiritual reality? Or, or like, you have any questions on that? Yes, I would like to, uh, for her to do something for me uh, in the spirit uh, well. <laughs> okay, well, we're not doing we're not doing readings today. No, no. Oh, yeah. But you know what, can we, can we mention that uh, we are going to be, uh, Michael and I are both today at what's called... No, we can't mention where you might be today. Oh, okay. It might be considered commercial or anything like that. Oh, so gotcha. I, okay. Access is not for profit and they have rules about that. Oh, got it. Thank you. Okay. 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 Well, okay. <laughs> we're not okay. doing readings then, Okay, yeah. no, Sandra, mm -hmm. but let's take the next call. Brenda, do you have any questions or comments for what we've just covered here today? Um, yes. I was wondering if you could contact my father. He passed away 16 years ago today. I'm sorry, we just finished the seance portion. Mm. But I think, you know, would you like to talk to her about that? I mean... Uh, if she wants to call and leave her number later. Well, leave your number at, uh, uh, with, the, with the phone operator. Renal, will you please take it down and um, we'll get to the next call in a few minutes. Give you a chance to jot it down. Uh, Susan, any more comments on what we just experienced? About your family and all? Mm, I don't know. I think they'll be shocked at the answers that I tell them. Especially like with my aunt, I was almost scared to tell her mm -hmm. about uh, the whole we do our experience. When I did tell her, she like freaked out as she went into like a whole search thing and everything, like you know, because she really thought that she was still living. Mm -hmm. So I just, just you know, <laughs> wondering like what's going to be her reaction when I tell her. Yeah. In the information I got today. Sometimes it can actually be more of a, <coughs> um, more of a, a feeling of peace mm -hmm. and finality more than anything else. Right. It's just knowing where, you know, what's really happening and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to make a uh, comment on on what people saw. If this was the first time they saw it, you know, some people couldn't could say, well, you know, uh, I could go into these facial gestures and maybe change my voice a little, but I've I've seen. Um, uh, Jory is the second channeler that I've seen do this, and um, she has other guides that come in, 
and her face and her gestures and her voice does change with each guide and all of them are different than her, her natural way of being. And um, I, I knew one woman who, um, who, who would channel various guides and sometimes you could tell it was a female, sometimes it was a male. She had one that was very decidedly an Irishman and she has no ability to fake French, German, Spanish accents. <laughs> and uh, she brought on this Irish brogue that was just fantastic. So you know that there's something else going on rather than just somebody trying to imitate or fake it. And I guess the final test of what's happening here is both the information, I would say the wisdom that comes through that, would, that, that connects to the questioner. Because that'll connect somehow to their personal life and they'll say, ah, that makes sense for me. And uh, all I can say is what the phenomenon that we just saw here is, is real. Uh, you mentioned the spirit gave the name of Raha. Yes. I should have asked who is Raha. Could you give us some explanation? Raha, is, yeah, I started channeling about uh, 13 years ago, and Raha was actually the first spirit guide that I had been uh, working with, that mm -hmm. I'd made contact with. And I personally, um, I will get him on occasion. So I was really pleased when I heard that it was him that was uh, coming through today, <laughs> which was really nice. Uh, who was Abraha's spirit, yeah. energy, uh, former life form, I mean... I believe that he was alive at one time, yes. Yes, any background on Raha? Or uh, no, what I feel is more, um, I feel more uh, like Egyptian or Tibetan energy, that sort of energy, when I feel this presence. Uh, is Tim still on the line? Tim, are you on the line? Hello? Yes, Tim, you have a question for Hey, how you doing? Fine. I'm out here in Berlin. Berlin. I got a question for all you guys out there. How you doing, hey, first Tim. of all? <laughs> how you doing? I'm good. Great. All What's your right, question? First, all right, my question is, all right, this is really serious. Uh, it, I'm going to be going out to the track today. Could no. you pick the track back up? <laughs> well, Tim. All right, all right, and the Cubs, are they going to win the World Series or what? <laughs> We can't do miracles yeah, here. Yeah, we're not, we're not, but we're not doing readings today. Maybe <laughs> wait, wait, we'll have another show where we can actually do readings or something. Well, 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 well Tim, also I suggest you can win by not going to the racetrack. I'm sorry? Yeah, I say you can always win at the lottery as long as you don't play it. Could you pick me lottery tickets or lottery numbers? Uh, we have Martza, M-A-R-T-Z-A, Martza. Did I get that right? Martza, are you on the Martza. line? Yes, I am. You have a question or comment? Yes, I have a question. I just have a 14-year-old son, and, you know, you try to communicate, you try to talk to him, and try to see if you're doing the right thing, and I just wondered, you know, what, I don't know, is, everything, is he okay, you know, is, there, is he missing something, am I doing something wrong, just worried, is it normal, you know, and you... I'm not getting the whole question here. Mm -hmm. Can you bring up her voice slightly? I just wondered, there like, is, you. you have a 14-year-old, you know, it's a, it's a son. I'm in, how do you, you know, is he okay? You, they, you know, they're quiet. They don't say much. I, is everything okay? You know, you try to do the right thing. Is, um, is he going to be okay? He's just graduated. You just wonder, you know, how his future is going to be. You know, I... That's, uh, that's yeah. another question. What I'm really feeling inspired to tell you is if you're having some trouble with him, then my encouragement is to go uh, do some therapy with him, to encourage him to talk more and communicate with you guys so you can actually develop a better relationship with him right now because it feels like that would be important for you. Okay? And, and he will be fine. But I would, I would take uh, an action like that at this time. And remember, the, the first step to having a good son is to have a good mother. There you go. And and I and generally sons don't try to reflect their mother and not disappoint them. Yeah. As long as you show love, I think you get it back. And and you and you have problems, but you can overcome them. I'm one of my psychiatrists now. Stop no. that. No. Uh, uh, Jorianne, has there any been experiences that have been upsetting or really scary? I mean. I, you know, I might have mentioned this before. The very first time I channeled, I didn't, I didn't realize I was going to be channeling. My father had passed away. My dad had died. And I was on the phone in the kitchen with my sister, who had been living at my dad's house at the time. And suddenly, I felt my voice changing. And I was starting to shake and tremble. And I was like, oh my god. And I could hear my dad's voice coming out of my throat, laughing, saying something to my sister. And I fought it off. I fought it off. 
And I ended up going ahead and calling her back later, telling her what I saw, and you know the dad was trying to say something, but I didn't know what the heck was going on, and it was years and years and years ago. So that was a real weird, unusual experience for me. But now I totally understand what was happening. My father was trying to make contact with my sister. I have, I have a question for Jorian and Michael. Um, certain music, when I hear it, puts you know shivers up my back. Does this have any? I mean, is it just that it puts shivers up my back, or could it mean something more? Because basically, Inca flute music and the Battle of Hymn of Republic always put shivers up my back. You know, like. Oh, no, there's a couple different okay. things could be yeah. going on there. Could be past life. Past life stuff, for sure. Okay. Throwing you right back into that, that time era and saying, yes. Well, Inca flute music really whacks me out when I hear it at the Battle of Hymn of Republic. They w I mean, literally, I have shivers up my back. It's <laughs> weird. And I actually do get a sense of you being in battles and in wars and things like oh, that. God, I hope I won't. Very patriotic yeah. and all that other stuff, <laughs> which you are still. Um, and the other thing is I believe that um, we, as spirits and as physical beings, we're supposed to be taking our health and everything else seriously, okay? Yeah. So you want to put in the right foods, you want to put in the right nutrients and everything else, and sounds also can affect us. I mean, imagine being in a nightclub with all this, um, what do you call it, acid rock or something music, bam, 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 constantly beating you, right? Yes. And that actually alters your state of centeredness and calmness. So music does affect us. And especially with the Inca flute music, there are certain pure sounds that resonate to different chakras. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that Inca flute music can can hit some very pure sounds, and that and that the resonant tone would would vibrate that particular uh, and stimulate that particular chakra. Yeah, they had an Inca band several years ago in <coughs> downtown, and when I heard it, it whacked me out horribly. Wow. Uh, also, Battle Republic always puts shivers, also, but. Inca and both. I hate to get both at the same time. It really whacked out then. I have to do wow. a past life reading on you. And no, see. that would be too <laughs> See what you were in your, in your past life. Maybe. Too boring. Too boring, <laughs> probably. I was once told I was probably a monk in a monastery. <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, we're, well, we're down to about six minutes um, and getting close to the end. You're talking about vibrations and noise. I, it's funny that I have these bells on the table. Yes, let's talk about would vibration. Like? Yes. yes. Yes, would you like to hear this? Yes, please. And then you can, we can actually find out how this affects, you know, the people as we do, as we hear this. <laughs> just let it, just let it s sit with you a moment. And what did you experience with that? Oh, I like water. Okay. I don't know. Not water. Um, felt like open plains or something like that. Water, open plains. Okay. And I actually, I actually felt a sense of like re rebalancing myself or being a little more centered. And sounds will do that. What about you, Alan? I just felt the uh, sound continuing for a long time and just everything you know, opening up and having the echo for quite a long time, mm -hmm. more than it should have. And so this, I, yeah. See, it, th these it, are very finely crafted in Indian Tibet so that there, you don't have a lot of overtones. Right. But it keeps that single it, thing going exactly. and going. Mm -hmm. and that's what's beautiful about and it. So I felt like it was going until you did it again. So it just kept the music was a continuation, or yeah. the sound was a continuation. We're in our last... We're in the last few minutes. Do we have anybody on the line? I'm not sure if we either have Mary or Lori left. If we have anybody on the line to bring them in. This is Mary. Uh, Mary? Hello, Mary. Hi there. Do you have a question or comment quickly? Uh, yeah, I enjoyed your show. And first I want to ask, is uh, there any way to get in touch with Jerry Ann? Was, um, I can't quite hear that. Repeat that, please. Is there any way to get in touch with uh, Jerry Ann? Well, you can leave your phone number uh, with the phone operator. Okay. Take care, Mary, and thank you for calling. Well, we're down to our last two minutes. Yes. Sure, Ann. Uh, do you have any ideas for any future shows? I'd like to do some more shows with you. I would love to do that, Bill. I would love to do that. You said something about some organization called hum um, Humanus. What? Humanus. Describe what they do. Yes, the Humanus, last two minutes. Humanus is a wonderful organization where uh, people that are uh, ready and willing to make some major changes in their life 
by looking at themselves, looking at, uh, this organization is going to help you look at some of the obstacles that we've created for ourselves and move past them to actually fully actualize yourself into anything and everything that you want to become, this organization will help you do that. Can you recommend any literature uh, that they could find in the library on this organization or, or anything they suggest that you read or study? Uh, I'm not sure yet, but if they want to leave their number here, I can go ahead and make sure that they get the literature to them. Well, I'll tell you what, in a couple months we'll schedule another live show and we'll do a program on Humanus. Yes. And, um, and you have some local people in Chicago come on with you? Yes. And then we'll do it. Yes. Right. I have one more show planned that'll be, uh, if we get it going, I've got a cop who wants to be in silhouette with a voice distorter, ex-cop. And we're going to talk subject is collars for dollars. You can guess what the subject could be about. But that's the title. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to do fun shows, you know, seances, cops, ex-cops in silhouette, you know, usual stuff. If everything goes true, I'm still trying to put it together at this point in time. Uh, I guess it's over with. Thank you, uh, Ellen, for thank coming you, down. Thank you, Jerry yeah. Ann. Thank you. Michael, thank you. And Susan. Oh, Mr. Stretch my hand over. God bless you. Susan, for coming. Uh, and it's been a wonderful you. day. Thank Take you. care. Thank Bye. You. Thanks. Bye.